What's up YouTube? I'm glad that you've joined me today and I hope that you are enjoying these videos and I hope that this video is particularly helpful to you. There's a lot of information. I'm going to try to cover it relatively quick. And uh, again, my name is Dr. Tom LeHue and I'm glad that you are, uh, um, are watching this video. And if you like it, please don't hesitate to subscribe. Uh, I'm going to do a lot more videos in the future about the Enneagram and many other things related to um, personal development and family life and I'm here to help you. That's what I want to do is I want to I want to share information with you that's been helpful to me and You guys that are familiar with the Enneagram this um, May not be new information, but it's always helpful. I find it to hear from another person's perspective um, I've benefited greatly from um, the books I've read and from the the videos I've watched and uh, I always appreciate somebody else's perspective helping me gain a fuller understanding and uh, I think the Enneagram is like that. Um, as you hear it uh, explained through other people's experience, it becomes um, more helpful to you and, and more helpful and more rich to you. So you guys that are familiar with the Enneagram, I wanna do a basic overview today. And this often happens in conversations with people when um, somebody says, tell me about this and what does it mean? And I don't know what my personality type is and I don't understand the significance of it. I'll usually have a conversation like this with them around a you know, a dinner table or a coffee table or something. And I want to do that today. That's all I want to do is, is basically have that same conversation with you so that if you're trying to figure out right now, you know, well, I mean, what is this, what, what is the overview of this? What is it, what is it about? And how do I start to figure out, you know, my personality type or my way of orienting myself to, to the world? So that's what I want to do today. The first thing I want to say is, you know, the, everybody, um, that's familiar with the Enneagram understands that it's basically divided into three different triads. The uh, top triad, the eight, the nine, and the one are all dealing with anger or anger issues in some way. It's kind of like reality is coming at them. There's decisions that need to be made. There's, you know, car payments that need to be made and kids that need to be picked up and everything's just coming at them like that. That's the way they, they describe how they feel is that there's something to do. So tell me what it is I need to do. And if you don't tell them what it is they need to do, then they, they're looking at you like, well, what am I, what are you talking to me for? I don't want to talk about feelings. I don't want to talk about, you know, necessarily what I think. I want to, I want, I want you to give me a plan. Tell me what to do. So they're very action oriented people, or at least in their thinking, they're action oriented. They want lists and, and they want a challenge list. And the eight, you know, reality comes at them or, or impulses or decisions come at them or needs for decisions. And they, they, their impulse is to react and and from that perspective of somebody's trying to get get over get something over on me and they're not going to take advantage of me and so i need to take action there's some there's somebody that's being oppressed or there's somebody that's being manipulated or there's some situation and we need to get to the truth we need to get to the bottom of things and so eights tend to jump at things like that the nine um realities coming at them and the sort of the way they deal with it is is to go to sleep to it is well maybe if I just you know put it off or somebody else will 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 take care of it and uh, I don't really want to prioritize what needs to be done or what steps need to be done and so they they kind of uh, just hope maybe if they look the other way that um, that it'll work itself out on its own or if they get busy at least doing something then maybe the the, the issue that they're avoiding will somehow take care of itself so nines, their their sin is sloth. The eight sin is is uh, lust or intensity. Everything's going to be done passionately. If they're going to go on a diet, they're going to go on a mega diet, you know. And it's going to be unlike anybody else's diet ever. It's going to be, you know, nonstop um, in your face, and it's going to be, you know, only eat oatmeal every day for six weeks, and it's going to be intense. Um, the nine's going to wrestle with sloth and laziness. Uh, the one uh, is the typical anger type. Frustration, I think, often is more the case. Uh, the one wants to take everything that's coming at them, put it down on a list, organize it, get a plan, and then work that plan. And they don't like it when people get in the way of that plan. It, they wake up with that, with that inner voice, that critical voice, you know, telling them what needs to be done, and they want to get it done. They want to uh, not be hindered in that process, and if everybody would just quit the foolishness, then we could get back to business and we can get things done. And so ones are very intense, serious people. 
that um, you know are always kind of like a simmering pot that anger is just underneath the surface it's not they want to be good they want to to display themselves as good and blowing up and being angry isn't isn't a good thing that's often one of the ways you can tell with eight nines and ones eights tend to like just project that anger outward um, they're more direct straightforward blunt harsh critical whatever you want to call it they have huge hearts don't get me wrong they have a huge heart but they have kind of that crusty exterior nines um, you know they um, they're kind of more like volcanoes and that, that it'll build up and build up and they'll just ignore it and and then eventually you know when they're pushed into a corner their whole thing is they don't want to be they don't want to be um, pushed on they want everybody to be at peace so that they'll be at peace they only feel like they're okay if everybody else around them is okay but if people are pushing on them and you know trying to get them to to take responsibility or to take action eventually sometimes you know that pushing can become more uh, intense to them than their their desire to just remain still and so sometimes you'll see nines like like a volcano just erupt you know and this typically quiet calm person just has those moments where they just flare up and then they go back you know to uh, to that calmness again I always think like nines have like in my head they have like that uh, like that song by Bob Marley, Don't Worry, Be Happy. You know, it's always kind of playing in, in their head. You know, it's kind of like the, the song that... I think eights have that song, uh, We're Not Gonna Take It, you know? <laughs> the Twisted Sister, We're Not Gonna Take It. And uh, that's what's played in their head. And so when you say, hey, would you help me with... We're not gonna take it. No, that's not my job. You... No. Um, not that they wouldn't help you, but, you know, it's they have to, like, tell... They have to talk themselves off the ledge all the time. Like, this person's not trying to take advantage of me. This person's not trying to manipulate me. This person... Okay, it's all right if I say yes to this. Where a lot of people's impulse is always to say yes, even when they shouldn't. The eight's impulse is to say no. No, I'm not going to do that. And then they have to say, well, maybe it's okay if I, if I say yes. The one, their impulse is... Um, is they can walk in they're they're called the perfectionists they walk into a room they know the air conditioner's not right the music's too loud the lights are too dim and they kind of see everything that needs to be organized and changed and fixed and uh, we appreciate ones because they get so much done they're great managers so those are the ones dealing with anger over on the other side two threes and fours are dealing with shame and it's so sad i mean because the the kind of the overlying thought in their head is um do i have the right to exist you know is they feel like they have to validate their existence like am I lovable am I worthy of love the eights nines and ones are not thinking that this five six and sevens aren't thinking that either but the twos threes and fours are dealing with that question of what makes me lovable am I of any value what's my purpose what's my meaning uh, you know and so the twos the helpers they will focus that uh, focus that attention externally on other people and they kind of have they kind of operate from the system or the idea that if I don't have any needs and I recognize all of your needs and I meet those needs then I will become important to you I'll become valuable to you and you'll you'll validate my worth so I'm I know I'm worthy or I know I'm valuable because because I do things for you and I take care of other people I take care of you and of course you know that does make them very attractive to us we uh, we want to be around people that you know put our needs first and take care of us, uh, compliment us, or I think the word they use in the enneagram is flattery. Um, we want to be around people that make us feel good about ourselves, and so that's kind of the trap they lay for us. Is is uh, you, you know you you walk past this this person at the desk every day, and every time you're around them, they're just so pleasant, they're just so kind, they're just so nice, they're so interested in you, they're so focused on you and your life and your uh, needs, and so you find yourself wanting to be around them, and they become very important to you, and that's kind of the 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 way that the the helper operates is as long as they're providing help to you and the focus is on you, then um, you know they. They get their sense of validation and, and I'm, I'm valuable and I'm worthy because I'm, I'm so important and so needed by you. So they, they are looking for needs so that they themselves will be needed. Um, the three, the uh, achiever, focuses all that attention on themselves. 
So instead of externalizing it on you and becoming important to you because of what they do for you, the achiever makes, makes themselves more desirable. They polish their, their external image. They polish themselves to the point that, that you admire them and you want to be around them because, wow, look at them. They can, they can do so much. They, they are, uh, are, you know, are so valuable and so important, so attractive. And it may not be just physically attractive, although it often is. I mean, they tend to be, you know, Barbie and Ken dolls. Um, they tend to be very focused externally, very driven, impulse, you know, to look good and to be attractive and uh, perfect teeth and perfect smiles and, you know, perfect GPAs. And you just want to be around them because they make you a better person. They, they, um, they are mentored and they mentor you. And they look for those kinds of relationships where they can make an impact and where they can uh, be, uh, you know, where they can demonstrate their attractiveness. And, and, and sometimes they can mistake people's admiration for them as people's love for them. And so it's kind of like the idea that, well, I, I know I'm valuable and I know I'm worthy because look at all these awards that I've attained. Look at all this importance that I've brought to the team. And so they, they may be focused on moving ahead and, and becoming successful in the corporation uh, or the organization, um, maybe more so than, than is healthy. Um, they, like ones, they may go to bed at night not being able to sleep, being restless because of all that needs to be done. The ones are thinking all this needs to be done to organize and solve the problems. The eight may stay awake at night thinking, what are they trying to get me to do? And who's to blame for this? And how can we stop this? The, the threes are gonna be awake all night thinking, how do I rise to the top? How do I get to the top of this organization? What do I need to do to position myself? What relationships do I need to make? What networks do I need to get involved in so that I can position myself to attain that next promotion or attain that next... Uh, um, so their eyes are kind of always on the prize. Um, Okay, so the four, the uh, individualist, is that person that, that says, well, they're struggling with shame and a sense of self-worth, but what they do is they sort of isolate themselves away from everybody else and they say, well, I'm not like everybody else, so I don't have anything to be ashamed of because I'm different. I stand out. I, I'm not like, and so where the two wants to find points of connection, they say, oh, you're from Indiana? I'm from Indiana. Oh, you're from Louisiana? That's where I'm from. And so they, they're always looking for what's similar to make connections. The three is all, or the four is always listening for what's unique and what's different about me, and they'll say, "Oh, you're from Indiana, yeah." Uh, and then they'll they'll minimize that because that's the point where we're, we we have that same relationship. They're looking for what makes them unique, what makes them stand out, what makes them different. At the at the end of the day, it's kind of like they they feel like maybe they don't have a personality. You know, they look at the the one manager and they say, "Oh, well, you know, Mary knows who she is." She seems to show up and she wears these clothes and she's the mom to these kids and she knows that she has these jobs she has to do. And Sam over there, you know, he's a lawyer and he has a very specific plan for his life. He knows who he is. He seems relatively secure in his identity. And then they're kind of looking at themselves like, you know, who am I? Who am I? What makes me unique? What makes me stand out? What makes me separate? And they feel like they're missing something in life and they, and they go on a quest of searching for that. So they're not afraid of their emotions because... Their emotions, they tap into those emotions to try to figure out, you know, more about themselves. And so they don't run away from sorrow and sadness because they just look at it as clues. If I can, if I can search inward and I can start to understand who I am by my emotions and what my emotions are telling me, then they feel like they get a better grasp of their identity. And so they're, they're always soul searching and um, they, they often can seem very melancholy or sad, artistic, creative because they're, they're willing to explore some depths in the personality that maybe the rest of us want to avoid. But they kind of have that feeling like, you know, who am I? What makes me different? What makes me stand out? What makes me unique? Because if I'm unique and different, then I'm not like everybody else, and then I don't need to be ashamed, I think is what's going on in their head. You guys that are fours, maybe you can make some comments. Uh, all of you guys, make some comments in the discussion, and, and maybe you can fill in some gaps for me. Again, I'm not any of these other numbers, so I'm just trying to understand how each of them are thinking. All right, so now we move away from the shame type, you know, over to the fear, the five, six, and seven. Um, the five, uh, the investigator, uh, 
the, the sort of sense they have of fear is, you know, the world outside, you know, where people are and where business is done. And, you know, that world is kind of intimidating and it's really big and there's a lot of giants out there. And so they kind of, you know, become like uh, more interested in their internal world, but not like the fours. The fours are interested in their etern- internal world, like what is it telling them? Uh, you know, so they're looking within to f- sort of figure out their identity um, and what sets them apart. The fives are, are very comfortable with the internal world of like facts and information. And so they're not necessarily sitting around thinking about how they feel. Um, they're interested in becoming masters of some type of information that will set them apart. So they kind of have that four energy that will set them apart uh, so that they'll be useful and so that they'll be safe and so that they'll be okay. Kind of think about it like this, like if there was a zombie apocalypse. Okay, that's the way five, six, and sevens. Uh, just think there's a zombie apocalypse coming, right? Fives feel like, well, if they can master everything there is to know about air conditioning, when the zombie apocalypse comes, I'll be okay because I'll be able to fix air conditioners. It doesn't make any sense, but that's that's kind of the way they're thinking is, is it's sort of like their bunker mentality. And so people in bunkers, you know, what do they do? They avoid everybody. They detach from people and they, they, they learn to occupy their time in their bunker, right? So fives kind of have that the individual or the investigators kind of have that bunker mentality that I'll be okay if I know everything there is to know about this discipline of information. Now, here's the interesting thing is they're not interested in the information if everybody else knows about it. That's not what really, what really excites them. What excites them is the information that you don't know. That's what they get. That's what they get motivated by is if you start telling a five what you know, you're going to drive them crazy because they don't want to know what you know. They go off in private and they investigate. They watch YouTube videos. They read books. They they may not be very good with a teacher because fives teach themselves. Teachers get in the way of their education. And so fives, they, they are always investigating, always learning, always growing in their understanding of how the world works or how some piece of the world works. And then they're very stingy about that information. They, they kind of withhold that information. Remember, their sin is greed. By the way, the four sin is envy. I forgot to mention that. The three sin is deceit because the three sort of sometimes, sometimes won't necessarily be completely honest with you in order to cover up the shameful parts of their life. The fours are envious, sort of saying, look, you seem like you know who you are in life and you seem like you, but I, who am I? What do I? What do I bring to the table? What sets me apart? The fives are dealing with the sin of greed. They kind of want to hold on to what makes them important, hold on to their information. And um, they, when, when they interact with you and they share information with you, they're, they're trying to connect with you. And so, uh, you know, the rest of the people in their life may sort of say, oh, here we go again. We're going to hear everything there is to know about, you know, communism, or we're going to hear everything there is to know about uh, you know, ancient civilizations. And, and most people just aren't interested in that detailed type of information. But when a five is sharing that information with you, they're really trying to make a connection. They're also maybe trying to show you that, look, I'm safe. I'm going to be okay because look at, look at how I've protected myself from the world by learning all this information. Okay, so the five, you know, becomes an investigator and feels like they're, they're only safe if they're experts in something. Um, and so they, they go on a mission to investigate, you know, everything there's to investigate about that. The six is the most obvious fear type. The six is, um, the person that says, look, you know, okay, the zombie apocalypse is coming, right? Or the managers are coming down. They're going to fire everybody in the office. And how do you know you're going to be okay when, when all that danger happens? So six is, you know, they feel like, well, if I align myself with the right people and I, and I don't stand out. Think how different that is than the four. The four wants to stand out. What makes me different? The three wants to stand out, be an achiever. The two wants to stand out and be so helpful to you, right? The the six says don't stand out. You know, people trip over nails that are sticking up. You know, they they what happens to those nails that stick up? You pound them back in, right? So the the six realizes, you know, the loyal skeptic. They realize that if I'm just if I'm just one of the herd, then I'll be okay. I'll be safe in that herd. And so if I'm friendly to people, um, or if I follow all the rules, or um, you know, if I rise up against any threat that might come, 
then uh, I'll be safe and I'll be okay. And they won't get me. They'll get they'll get they'll get the weak ones over there, the ones that aren't following the rules. They'll get the ones over there that aren't friendly and aren't kind. I'll be all right. I'll be safe. And so sixes are loyal, but they're loyal in sort of a skeptical way. They're loyal because they really want that loyalty from you. Uh, they they it's kind of like they feel like their um, their internal compass has been has been um, you know messed with in some way and so they they don't trust necessarily their own ability to make decisions now they're great at making decisions i mean they're great at taking in all the information and pro they are problem solvers okay because this is the way their brain works their, their their brain works to solve problems and to resolve you know problems but at the end of the day they don't necessarily trust their own ability to do that we lean on them because they're good at solving problems, but they don't necessarily feel like they can trust their own mechanisms for solving problems. So they want your support. They want your support. They want you to help them work through their problems. They, they deal with anxiety and they're frustrated by that anxiety and they sometimes need us to talk them through a situation and help them see that it's probably gonna be okay, it's probably gonna work out all right. And they want to talk through that and they want to come to that conclusion and they sometimes are looking for an expert in their life or support in their life to help them realize that they're going to be okay. It's kind of like their internal decision making ability has been jammed in some way. Um, and although they're probably the best at solving stuff, they, they don't necessarily trust their own ability to do that. So they want to know that you're going to be there for me in case something bad happens. You're going to be there. You're going to be there to support me. And so that's what they do. They're there to support you. They're there, you know, to be, but they have that suspicion in the back of their mind always that maybe you're not going to be there for me when I need you. So they're called the loyal skeptic. They're loyal because that's what they want from you, but they're skeptical whether or not you're really going to come through for them. Okay. And then the seven. That's what I am. All right. So the seven is the um, the enthusiast. The seven kind of looks at it like, okay, maybe there's a zombie apocalypse coming out there. So we might as well just go have some fun right now and not worry about it. So like the nine, they kind of have that don't worry mentality, uh, but it's because they distract themselves with with everything that's glittery and shiny. And they feel like if I just had that over there, if I could just get this, if I could just, you know, if I could distract myself in some way, then maybe I don't have to worry about, you know, what might happen. Um, some people say that, you know, the sevens, they're, they're more afraid of like all the dark and all the stuff fours are happy to talk about, you know, the dark feelings and the dark emotions and sadness and sorrow and all those things that they can deal with. Sevens want to run away from all that stuff. It's kind of like we make a decision. Why would I want to think about all those terrible things and all those painful things um, when I could think about something more enjoyable? So sevens are always working to like raise the energy of a room or raise the energy of a group. They're, they, they, um, they are light. They tend to come across as very lighthearted, very, you know, humorous or funny, um, because they're always thinking to themselves, you know, how can I, how can I soften everything? How can I, how can I soften everything? And how can I raise the energy, um, raise the tempo a little bit? So sevens often will be tapping their foot or humming to themselves, you know, because, just being isn't enough. They have to sort of like crank things up a little bit. This is one of the ways you can tell sevens are different from threes. They, they can look the same in that they're, they're both assertive types, uh, but the three doesn't, has a hard time making themselves look foolish in front of people where the seven will. The seven will make themselves look foolish if it will get a laugh and it will you know, bring a sense of okayness to everybody. Think of the seven, you know, think of like a funeral. Okay, you're at a funeral and everybody's crying. The four is over there snickering to themselves because they're different. They stand out, you know, or everybody's laughing, having a good time. The four will stomp away and go off and retreat into a bathroom crying because their grandmother's got cancer or some, some and they want people to follow them and it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. They want, you know, the six wants people, you know, to, to be there for them. The seven might be laughing and snickering at a funeral, but it's not. It's, it's not for necessarily the same reasons, you know, or at an inappropriate time, I should say that. It's, it's, to, it's because everything got too heavy. Everything got too, see, fours aren't afraid of heaviness. Sevens, everything got too heavy, and that, that's dealing with all the stuff in life that we don't want to deal with. And so what action do I need to take to sort of bring things back to a sense of, 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 uh, of okayness? Sevens are the perpetual children, you know, that, uh, 
don't want to grow up and they want to keep everything lighthearted. And so they're fun to be around, but sevens can kind of be their own worst enemy sometimes. Sometimes they can be their worst enemy uh, if they don't take things seriously and they don't deal with, with uh, you know, the difficult things in life that need to be dealt with. All right, so that gives you a basic overview. The three top dealing with anger, the three over on the side dealing with shame, and the three, the other three dealing with fear. Um, and that'll give you a good overview to get you started and, uh, and hopefully something that I've said was helpful to you or made you see things in a new light. And um, you know, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, in the description, there's information. If you need to get, in, if you want to get in touch with me, obviously, you can leave comments and all that as well. But uh, I hope this has been helpful to you, and I hope this will help you on your journey. And like always, you know, be present to life, be there, and uh, be a blessing to others. So I'll see you next time. All right, guys, take care.